Kristen here for your What's Up Wednesday. I am coming to you today to specifically highlight some of my favorite AI tools. So this can get to be a very lengthy conversation, so I'm going to jump right in to showing you some of my favorites. All right, so this slide right here just shows you four of the ones that I typically highlight when I have a conversation with teachers. So I love Curapod, Canva, Twee, and this top AI.tools is great. So I'm going to jump out of this presentation and jump into each one of those, but I'm giving you like a taste, not even unloading it all on you. So just take some time to, to check those out. So for start, this is Curapod. So I went to curapod.com, already have an account. I am in the Discover tab. And what I like about Curapod is there are a lot of things already created there or I can upload my own slides. If I upload my own slides, what's cool about it is I can hit this option called Curify My Slides. And what it will do is it will insert some AI questions that typically, from my experience, they really are on point for what I need. We have all of these options. Um, kids love it. I've done it with crowds of, of teachers. You can even get some personalized feedback based on what you put in. So totally 100% encourage you to check out CurePod and generate with AI. That was under Create Your Lesson. The other one I have was Tweet. Your homepage of Tweet will bring you to basically the list of what all it does, but it will allow you to upload videos to do things with. It will, you can put in a text and it will generate questions. You can have it do practice words, um, vocabulary activities, and more. So I'm just going to grab a video right quick to show you why I love this so much. So I'm going to go to our Trafera page. I'm going to copy one of our What's Up Wednesdays, going back to Twee. And I'm going to uh, warm up. Just, actually, I'm going to do choose the right summary. So I'm clicking on there. I am pasting in my video. It's just a YouTube video. I am going to hit do the magic. And whatever is happening right here, I don't know. I cannot explain it. But it somehow has interpreted the video. And they are giving me three different options for summary. So the kids would have to watch it and pick out the correct summary. Is that that? Isn't that cool? Then it gives me next steps. Don't stop. You can add audio and video questions. All right, let's do that. And I'm going to do do the magic. And they give you questions to go with the text, y'all. Totally, totally, totally encourage you to check out Tweet. While we're doing it with a video, it's just as magical and cool to see it with text and even words that you put in. So that's Tweet.com. The other one that I had on there um, is this site, Top AI Tools, Top AI dot tools. And what this is, is a compiled list of AI tools and research and different. Somebody else has basically done all the work. So let's say that I have no idea what I want to use for AI. I don't know what all is out there, but I know that I want to do something with writing. So rather than me go spend 30 minutes looking for an AI tool, if I go to this page, so I clicked on writing. And I have a compiled list of 250 tools. So I know that's still a little bit overwhelming, but they give you the breakdown and the description of them. And um, that's sometimes that, that's a time saver in itself. Um, just to show you, there are other ones. Here's, um, let's say I want to look for something in design and they give me some design tools. So if I'm an art teacher, I can maybe go start right there to look for AI. Um, I don't want to get into the weeds too much with these other things, but I do like to highlight a little bit of this. Um, I'm going to show it for a second so you can see that AI for teachers. I use Bar, Chat, GPT, and Bing. I think those are all um, valuable for me. Of course, I always look and see, um, is it is it trustworthy? Is it credible? Does it make sense? Because you can't trust everything, just like we tell our students. Um, but what you see in these white blocks is just ideas of what you can do. Some of my favorite things to do on here is to um, explain topics. So I was really known for like just kind of over talking and just being too descriptive with things for some students and they just didn't get it. So I have found that if I had something that was too wordy, 
I could go put that into Bing, for example, and just say simplify. And that could be all that you need to be able to help kids who don't really understand what you're saying, get it. You can even have it create graphics for things. Some kids are just visual learners. So I really like to use it for um, explaining topics, even just a quick bell ringer, like, hey, create three questions to, to get an idea where my students were with whatever topic. So it's made, think of it as a little assistant, not just artificial intelligence. Let it be your assistant in the classroom. And then for students, y'all, I have um, really trying to take, a, take on the whole idea of we have technology. We need our students to be able to use it responsibly. Responsibly, sorry, words are hard for me this evening. So um, in the classroom, I would actually allow my students to use it within the constraints of whatever policy we, we come up with. Um, they can create their own study guides with content they've learned. They can put in their, uh, like if they did a writing, they can put their writing into um, one of the one of the uh, sources that you allow them to use and ask for feedback based on whatever criteria. Um, they can generate brainstorms. My oldest son just went and was studying for Calc 2 in college. And of course, I can't help with that. And he was just out of practice questions. He went to both Bard and ChatGPT and he put in the type of question and he said, create more. And he thought, it is not going to work. Like, there's no way. This is Calc 2. It's not going to be accurate. And he was pleasantly surprised to be able to get more practice questions and even got feedback on some of them after he after he solved them. So that's a great, great idea for students. Also, in this blue box right here, I wanted to point out this source, codebreakeredu.com. I'm going to go ahead and jump in it real quick just so you can see what it looks like. All right, Codebreaker is right here. And... It's one that I would allow my students to use because it doesn't collect any kind of data. There's no kind of sign in, but students can use it and get some feedback. So I can say, help me with the scientific method um, understanding. And let's see what it does. So this is codebreakeredu.com. It's doing some magic. I did not have to sign in. So it gives some little steps right here, but maybe that's too much. So let's just type in simplify and see if it's going to do that in a way that's helpful for my students. Okay. So you can see it gave me details right here that may be overwhelming. And then down here, it simplified it. So codebreakeredu.com is a cool one for kids that they don't have to worry about getting um, or their data being collected. All right, so that was a very quick, very simplistic What's Up Wednesday on my favorite AI tools. Hopefully you got something out of this. Let me end it like this so it looks like it's all together. And anyway, there is my name. There's my email if you have any questions. Hope you got something out of this. Bye.